welcome back to unit one, Psychology's History and Approaches, module three, which is subfields in psychology. This is actually one of the shortest modules we will have. Um, so we should get through this pretty quickly. So the learning targets that we have, things that you wanna be focused on understanding within this module, um, those targets are being able to explain the difference between basic and applied psychology, and then being able to have a general idea of what it is that psychologists do within the various subfields. And there are quite a lot, and they're very diverse. Psychology is a very diverse pr profession. And I think lots of times when we think about the term psychologist, um, when I've asked students in the past, oftentimes they think of, you know, sort of Sigmund Freudish type <laughs> psychologist and the couch in more of a clinical type setting um, with psychoanalysis. And in reality, there are psychologists doing so many different things. And we're gonna go over some of those things right now. So what is the difference between basic and applied psychology? So basic research scientific inquiry that aims to increase psychology's knowledge base. So sort of thinking about pure science in that regard. The whole point of it is to learn something, not necessarily that's going to be applicable to any particular, th particular situation, but understanding that we're trying to increase the scientific basis of psychology in some way. Whereas applied research is scientific inquiry that aims to use psychology to solve practical problems. So sort of having a real world application of science. So which types of psychologists conduct basic research? Well, psychologists conducting basic research are often biological psychologists or neuroscientists, developmental psychologists, cognitive, educational, personality, and social psychologists. Now, there definitely is overlap between those conducting basic and applied research, but in general, these types of psychologists are the ones that are more likely to be conducting basic as opposed to applied research. On the other hand, <laughs> you can see that there's a lot of overlap, right? <laughs> you can also have these types of psychologists conducting applied research. And you definitely will see um, IO psychologists doing more applied research or human factors psychologists doing more applied research as well. So psychology is a helping profession. You know, we're, we were just talking about psychology from the research perspective, but a lot of us really think about psychology or come into the field with an interest because we want to help people. We want to be part of a helping profession. We want to guide people toward healthy relationships, help them overcome anxiety and depression, and help them cope with whatever difficulties they're having. And a lot of times, um, people come into their study of psychology wanting to do that, and they continue on that path. But other times, people come in thinking that's what they want to do, and then they realize there's this whole there's this whole other world of experimental psychology and um, maybe social psychology, uh, areas that they hadn't, hadn't been aware of beforehand and they kind of veer to a different path. So for the next several slides, we're gonna talk a little bit about differentiating between types of psychologists and between psychologists and psychiatrists. Um, and that will pretty much be what we're doing throughout the rest of this module. So counseling versus clinical psychologists. Interestingly, as a, I was in a, I got my PhD in school psychology and the programs, the program that I was in um, was a, was combined school psychology and counseling psychology program. So I have a, um, a lot of knowledge about counseling psychologists as well, even though I went through a school psychology program, we had a lot of overlapping coursework. So counseling psychologists help people cope with adjustments, adjustments and crises, challenges related to work, school, family, and relationships. They may administer psychological tests, do therapy and counseling, and they may also conduct research. Clinical psychologists are usually dealing with assessing and treating mental, emotional, and behavioral disorders. Also, they will be doing lots of um, administration of psychological tests, and so do school psychologists. That was a big part of what my job was and they do therapy and counseling, and they may also conduct research. So you're gonna see throughout this um, description of a lot of these different subfields, there's definitely, again, overlap. Now this next slide is sort of differentiating between 
clinical psychologist versus a psychiatrist. And I think sometimes people struggle to understand the differences there. And there's some pretty big differences in terms of a clinical psychologist versus a psychiatrist in terms of training. A clinical psychologist will hold a PhD or a PsyD, PhD standing for a doctor of philosophy, um, which usually has more of a research component involved, or a PsyD, which is a doctorate of psychology, which is definitely geared more towards the clinical practice. Clinical psychologists provide psychotherapy to individuals with psychological disorders often. Whereas a psychiatrist holds an MD, they may also prescribe drugs to treat physiological causes of psychological disorders, and they sometimes also provide psychotherapy. How about cognitive psychologists? What are they and what do they do? Well, they study human thinking and they could work as a professor and researcher or made up, might also work as a corporate consultant. How about developmental psychologists? Um, they study how our behavior changes as we age. They could work in a school or daycare center. They may specialize in elder behavior or work in a senior center. Most often though, the ones that I've known have been focused on research and usually working within university settings. How about educational psychologists? They study how we learn in different environments and in different ways. They might work in schools or universities, designing tests or doing teacher trainings. And again, as my background is in school psychology, we get a lot of overlap with educational psychology departments. Usually the educational psychology department was a little bit more research focused and the school psychologist program was a little bit more applied ap application focused. So what do experimental psychologists do and where do they work? Well, they conduct experiments to understand our behaviors and mental processes. They might work as professors at universities, be employed at research institutes, um, zoos, <laughs> and they study animal behavior in, business, in businesses or even in government agencies. Hopefully you're seeing that there's just so much overlap between where different types of psychologists can work, even within applied versus sort of experimental research settings. And you can, and I've known a lot of people that have started off in um, being, you know, an applied sort of clinical psychologist who is very much into counseling and therapy and doing psychological testing. And then later on, they shifted gears a bit and decided they wanted to become a university researcher or vice versa. Sometimes that happens as well. So what do psychometric psychologists do and where do they work? Um, well, they use math. These are, those, these are the people that are more into research methods and statistics, and they use their knowledge to create, administer, score, and interpret tests, things like intelligence or personality tests, for example, that we're going to be studying a lot about um, within this course. They might work in university settings or private research firms or government agencies, you know, working for private companies like the College Board or Kaplan or the Princeton Review. Um, if you have a lot of knowledge in the psychometrics of tests, uh, you probably can have a lot of options for jobs later on. So how about social psychologists? Social psychology is so fascinating and one of my favorite topics you'll learn as we move through this course. They study how we interact with others and how groups impact us individually. They might work as most often, um, they work at university professors doing research or in consulting positions, market research, or other applied fields such as social neuroscience. So the next type of psychologist, forensic psychologist, is very interesting. They sort of bring mesh together law and psychology. They might develop public policy for the mentally ill, consult on jury selection, or help law enforcement in criminal cases. Um, they could potentially also work in law schools or in courts or in mental health agencies or even in prisons. So environmental psychologists, this might be one you haven't heard of, not as well known. These types of psychologists study how we are influenced and affected by our natural environment or urban sort of built around us surroundings. They again could work as university professors or as part of different teams, consulting, nonprofit or government agencies. Health psychologists work to promote and prevent disease. They may design programs to stop smoking, help you with sleep, prevent um, disease or psychosocial problems related to disease. Oftentimes these types of psychologists work as professors or in rehab centers, medical schools, hospitals, um, <coughs> excuse me, private practice or even public health agencies. Industrial organizational psychologists study the relationships between people and our work environments. 
They investigate things like worker productivity, personnel selection, as well as the structure within organizations, consumer behavior. There's a big overlap between IO psychology and things like um, certain areas of marketing within business programs. So if you go into an IO program, um, like to get a graduate degree, you'll probably have a lot of overlap with marketing programs within the business, business domain. Uh, IO psychologists often work in universities or very often within businesses or industries um, or as consultants or within government agencies. So neuropsychologists, what do they do and how do they work? Well, they study how our brain affects our behavior and thoughts. So things like treating Alzheimer's, working with athletes, and concussions, people with ADHD or people with autism. It's a big overlap between neuropsychology, some people that in clinical psychology and school psychology, because all of those groups do a lot of psycholog psychological and psychoeducational testing. These types of psychologists also often work in universities or hospitals. So how about rehab psychologists? Well, they help individuals who have lost functioning after an accident or illness. Again, working in um, medical facilities like hospitals, rehab centers, um, private practice, or as university professors. So school psychologists, this is what my background is in. I got my PhD in school psychology from the University of Maryland. School psychologists work usually, not always, with kids in schools dealing with problems that may be negatively affecting learning in the classroom. So usually, Within my job as a school psychologist, I was doing lots of psychoeducational assessments to, to, and working with teachers, consulting with them, trying to figure out um, if we were dealing with a particular child, what could we do to help that child to develop interventions to make that he or she be more successful within the school environment. It might, it might have been more focused towards behavior or emotional issues or specifically having um, academic issues. Oftentimes I was doing assessments for specific learning disabilities in reading or writing or mathematics or listening or even oral expression. Most school psychologists work in elementary and secondary schools. Some might work in university settings as professors um, and some work in government agencies or private practice or private research. There's really um, a bunch of different environments at school, even though they're called school psychologists, sometimes they don't work within schools. School psychology is interesting across um, many states. The requirements are a little bit different, but it's one of the only ways that you can become, um, use the title psychologist if you have the word school in front of, it, in front of it, if you do not have a PhD. Most of the entry level programs to become a school psychologist for, to work in like public school settings actually do not require a PhD. Whereas becoming a clinical psychologist um, and, have, and doing private practice pretty much requires a PhD across most states. So sports psychologists. These types of psychologists work with athletes to help improve performance. They might work at universities or with private companies. Um, uh, and they might help with athletes who are having anxiety or de you know, dealing with why they're stressed out and having performance issues all of a sudden, or if athletes are um, having substance abuse issues, use issues, they might work with a sports psychologist as well. So clinical psychologists are what we oftentimes think of when we're th thinking in terms of our first kind of thought about what psychologists do. So they promote psychological health in individuals, groups, or organizations. Um, they may specialize in specific psychiatric disorders. Um, some clinical psychologists that you'll you look up clinical psychologists near you, you'll often find some that say that they specialize mostly in depression, or they work a lot with individuals with anxiety, or they work a lot with children, or um, most clinical psychologists do have more of a specialization in one area. They usually provide therapy in their private practice, or they might work in a university setting or correctional facility, even for the military. So community psychologists, um, working with larger groups and communities, just as it sounds, focusing on crisis management, such as after a hurricane or a tornado or an earthquake happens, community psychologists might come in to work with these communities and help them sort of overcome the obstacles that, that they have in their way. They can work, also work as universities or in federal, state, or local mental health departments or as consultants. Counseling psychologists, 
Um, they help individuals, again, cope with or make difficult life changes, oftentimes working within university, university settings, health centers, uh, schools, businesses, or private practice. So that was a lot of different types of psychologists. <laughs> a lot of subfields within psychology and hard to keep it all straight. Um, don't worry about knowing it all right now, but just getting an idea of how you're gonna organize kind of what these different types of psychologists are and do um, right now is just kind of what's important. Just getting a basic framework for understanding that there are so many different choices. If you decide to go on and um, study psychology further, that there are a lot of different um, avenues, a lot of different paths, a lot of different outcomes you can have as a psychologist. Okay, so let's do a little review of our learning targets, explain the differences between basic and applied psychology. Well, scientists conduct basic research to increase the field's knowledge base, whereas applied research is used to solve practical problems. Just learning target number two, describe what psychologists working in various subfields do and where they work. So these are all the different subfields that we went over. Um, there were a lot of them. And like I said, memorizing them at this point is not important, but kind of getting an idea of how to organize them within your brain is a, is a good idea right now. Describe what psychologists working in various subfields do and where they work. Well, most, if you notice, there was again, lots and lots of overlap between just because you're a counseling psychologist doesn't mean you're only gonna work in a counseling center. Lots of counseling psychologists are professors or they're working in other research institutes or they're working at a government agency or at a healthcare institute. There's a lot of overlap and sort of, if you end up going on and getting a graduate degree in clinical psychology doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna work in private practice. Um, you may end up doing something very different than that. And that's it for learning module, um, uh, module number three. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. Thanks.